Hey there, today I'm revealing how to reverse insulin resistance, a dangerous condition that affects 88 million Americans that most doctors never diagnose until it is too late, until you have diabetes and so forth. It kills more people every year, more than COVID, flu, pneumonia, RSV combined. And it is more contagious than you think. I have helped really thousands of patients completely reverse their insulin resistance using specific foods and life lifestyle changes. Now, one patient, for example, reduced her insulin use by 65% in just 60 days. I'll show you the exact foods that heal insulin resistance, the simple timing strategy that works better than any medication, and why addressing this condition now can prevent diabetes, heart disease, and even dementia later, which is, you know, most people call dementia now type 3 diabetes because it is due to insulin resistance. Let's dive into this life-changing information right now. Insulin resistance is the hidden epidemic right now, actually, that conventional medicine largely ignores until it progresses to full-blown diabetes and silently damaging you throughout the years, even decades before your blood sugar ever becomes elevated. Now, my patient, one of my patients, her name was Sarah, came to me exhausted, carrying extra weight around her middle that wouldn't budge despite rigorous exercise, experiencing brain fog, which affected her work performance, and so forth. Now, her doctor had run standard tests and told her that everything was normal. Uh, but when we tested her insulin levels, not just the glucose, we discovered her insulin level was nearly three times higher than normal. She was insulin resistant, that was clear, and completely undiagnosed. This is happening to millions of people right now. Fatigue is something that doesn't improve, for example, with rest. You might be experiencing that. You might be experiencing some other symptoms like stubborn belly fat that won't go away despite diet and exercise, or brain fog and trouble concentrating, or intense cravings for carbs and sugar, or skin tags or dark patches under your armpits or behind your neck, or frequent hunger or energy crashes. The frosting reality is that the standard medical practice does not test for insulin resistance until it is really late. Your doctor might tell you that your blood sugar is fine, but they are missing the bigger picture. In the functional medicine world, we know that insulin rises first, sometimes 5 to 10 years before blood sugar becomes abnormal. This matters because insulin resistance does not just lead to diabetes, it is linked to heart disease, Alzheimer's. PCOS, fatty liver disease, and even certain cancers. And the good news is it is completely reversible with the right approach. To understand how to reverse insulin resistance, you need to understand what is happening in your body. Insulin is your body's master storage hormone. When you eat carbohydrates, your blood sugar rises, triggering your pancreas to release insulin. Insulin's job is to escort glucose into your cells for energy. But when your cells are constantly bombarded with insulin due to our great modern diet or sad diet or standard American diet, whatever you call it, then the horrible lifestyle that goes with it, the cells start ignoring the signal, like tuning out an alarm that never stops ringing. And this is insulin resistance for you. In functional medicine, and in my practice in Port St. Lucie as well as an endocrinologist, we recognize five primary drivers of insulin resistance. Number one is excessive carbohydrate consumption. The average American consumes over 250 to 300 grams of carbohydrates daily, causing constant insulin spikes. Our bodies were not designed to handle this continuous glucose load, my friend. And meal timing and frequency is another problem. Eating throughout the day, like breakfast at 7, snack at 10, lunch at noon, snack again at 3, dinner at 6, dessert at 8 o'clock, means that your insulin levels never get a chance to drop. Your pancreas is constantly pumping out insulin, leading to cellular resistance. Chronic stress is another thing, right? When you're stressed, physically or mentally, your body releases cortisol. And by the way, a stress when you exercise, a short-term stress, which is not what I'm talking about, I'm talking about chronic long-term stress. And that releases cortisol, which triggers glucose release from your liver. This raises your blood sugar and insulin, and even when you haven't eaten anything. And many people are walking around with chronically elevated cortisol, driving their insulin resistance without knowing. Another thing that really causes a big problem, and that's nothing to do with diet, but that is poor sleep quality. Just one night of inadequate sleep can reduce your insulin sensitivity by up to 25%. 
Chronic sleep deprivation is actually a major driver of insulin resistance that most doctors never discuss unless patient complains about it. Environmental toxins. Most people don't have any idea about this because we know certain chemicals in our environment like EPA in plastics or pesticides in your food and you think you're eating vegetables and fruits but if they're not organic and you don't wash them very well you are getting exposed to a lot of pesticides and sometimes heavy metals and they will interfere with insulin signaling and will promote insulin resistance. The research on insulin resistance is compelling. A 2018 study in the Journal of Endocrine Society found that 88% of American adults have some degree of metabolic dysfunction, with elevated insulin being the earliest sign. Another study in JAMA Internal Medicine showed that people with insulin resistance have a 500% higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes even with normal blood sugar. What is most concerning is that insulin resistance affects your entire body. It damages blood vessels, accelerates plaque formation in arteries, promotes inflammation in the brain, and drives cellular aging. It is truly a whole body condition that requires a whole body approach to heal. Now, what is the solution and action plan here? Let's get to the solution, right? My five-step plan to reverse insulin resistance naturally. Step one is adopt an insulin-friendly eating pattern. The most powerful foods for reversing insulin resistance include number one, non-starchy vegetables. Aim for six to nine cups daily of leafy greens like broccoli, cauliflower, zucchini, peppers, etc. These provide fiber and nutrients that improve insulin sensitivity without spiking glucose. Healthy fats like incorporate avocados, olive oil, nuts, seeds, fatty fish daily. Research shows that monounsaturated and omega-3 fats usually improve the insulin receptor function. And quality protein include at least 4 to 6 ounces of clean protein at each meal, like wild-caught fish, pasture-raised eggs, grass-fed meat, organic tempeh, etc. Protein stabilizes blood sugar and helps repair insulin receptors as well. There are specific spices that you can use, such as cinnamon, turmeric with black pepper, ginger, and use it liberally. 2020 study in the Journal of Medicine Food found that just half a teaspoon of cinnamon daily improved insulin sensitivity by up to 20%. Berries and stress is important fruits. They are lowering sugar and high in compounds that improve glucose metabolism. But I would say still only limit to half a cup per day. Let's talk about foods to minimize or avoid. You want to definitely avoid refined grains like bread, pasta, cereal, added sugars in any form, industrial seed oils, corn oil, soybean oil, canola oil, artificial sweeteners. They can actually worsen insulin resistance as well. And processed foods with chemical additives. Now step two, to transform your meal timing. How are we going to do that? Well, this can be really the most powerful, I would say. We're going to practice time-restricted eating. Not everybody can do this, but when it's doable, you will condense your eating window to 8 to 10 hours daily. For example, eat only between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., giving your body 16 to 18 hours without food. And during that eating period, don't eat sensibly. You know, you're eating, but you don't have to be eating like every hour. You're going to space the meals properly. If you're not intermittent fasting, I would say wait at least four or five hours between meals with no snacking. Snacking really is horrible. With snacking, you cannot lower your insulin levels unless you're eating just, you know, certain healthy nuts and so forth. And you can also consider longer fasting periods. If you're good with 16 to 18 hours of fasting, once adapted, many of my patients actually can do and benefit from a 24-hour fast, uh, not too often, maybe once a week, and this powerfully resets the insulin sensitivity. Beautiful. My patient, Michael, reduced his fasting insulin from 22 to 8, and optimal is under 8. But in just eight weeks, primarily by changing when he ate and not just what he ate. Step three, optimize the sleep quality. Poor sleep is a major driver of insulin resistance that is often overlooked. Aim for seven to nine hours of quality sleep, night sleep. Maintain consistent sleep and wake times. That's a, that's a big one. Create a sleep sanctuary like dark, cool, quiet bedroom. Avoid blue light from screens two hours before bedtime. And consider supplements like magnesium glycinate and tart cherry extract before bed. And number four is you got to manage stress effectively. You cannot avoid stress, but uh, chronic stress, if not managed correctly, directly drives insulin resistance through cortisol. 
and practice daily stress reduction. The stress will happen. It's like, you know, you cannot really prevent your car getting dirty, no matter how you drive, but you have to practice that. You have to wash your car to reduce the dirt on it, right? So you're gonna practice stress reduction to reduce the stress that is happening to you anyway, because you just cannot control the rest of the world. You can do meditation, you can do deep breathing, like four, seven, eight breathing we talked in previous videos, yoga, nature walks, whatever, right? And you can also consider adaptogens like ashwagandha, rhodiola, holy basil, which have been shown to reduce cortisol and improve insulin sensitivity. Set boundaries around the work and technology. Schedule regular recovery time in your week. Step five, I would say, incorporate some strategic movement. Not everybody can move a lot, but exercise is really powerful medicine for insulin resistance. But the type of exercise matters. Strength training, two to three sessions weekly of the resistance training primarily, because building muscle creates more insulin receptors. And sometimes if you're fit or younger, high intensity interval training, one to two times weekly, around 20 to 30 minutes will be a big, big improvement in your insulin resistance. Research shows that HIIT, which is H-I-I-T, the high intensity interval training, improves insulin sensitivity more effectively than steady-state cardio. Now, daily movement-wise, aim for eight to 10,000 steps daily. Even a 15-minute walk after meals can reduce post-meal insulin spikes by up to 30%. Avoid excessive cardio as well. Too much cardio or endurance exercise can actually increase cortisol and worsen insulin resistance in some people if you are overdoing it. Let's create a plan for you so you can implement this. Week one, we're gonna focus on food quality and removing the biggest insulin triggers. Week two, we're gonna begin time-restricted eating, like 12-hour window to start, typically. And week three, we're gonna add some strategic exercise and stress management. And week four, we're gonna optimize sleep routine and extend fasting window if ready. Most of my patients see significant improvements within 30 days with continued progress over three to six months. The key is consistency in addressing all five factors. All these food and lifestyle changes are the foundation for reversing insulin resistance. And certain supplements can accelerate your results as well. At SugarMD, we have developed evidence-based formulas specifically for improving insulin sensitivity. One of them is berberine, our berberine, and we also have dehydroberberine, which is much more absorbable form of berberine, supplements the activation of the AMP kinase which is your body's master metabolic switch that improves insulin sensitivity at the cellular level. Clinical studies show that the berberine can be as effective as metformin for improving insulin function. Alpha-lipoic acid is another powerful antioxidant that enhances insulin signaling and protects against oxidative damage. I think every diabetic should have alpha-lipoic acid, if possible, or alpha-lipoic acid, which is the active form of alpha-lipoic acid. That's also available at our website, and you can find in other reliable sources if you prefer to do so. The advanced glucose support we have combines multiple insulin sensitizing compounds, and uh, we have a new product uh, in the horizon, which is almost here. By the time you watch this video, it may be there. Gluxion. It is something interesting that a lot stronger than many other things that we have tried in the past with different formulations. But this one is very futuristic, very cool. I would recommend if your sugars are not at goal or if your insulin resistance is not getting any better, consider adding Gluxion as well. If your blood sugar is not very high, we have a product called Glucodefense, and that also can be a helpful addition. For those enjoying the tea, diabetes contains a blend of herbs, which is a sugar MD diabetes, which is tea bags that you can basically drink cold or hot, and that will improve your insulin sensitivity. At our website, we offer a free metabolic health guide, insulin-friendly recipe book that you can download immediately as well. Insulin resistance is reversible, like I explained. I have seen it happen hundreds of times in my practice. The key is addressing the root causes through food, timing, sleep, stress management, and movement. Start with one change this week, perhaps begin with time-restricted eating or adding more non-starchy vegetables to your meals. Small, consistent changes add up to powerful results over time. If you suspect you have insulin resistance but have not been diagnosed, consider asking your doctor for a fasting insulin test or HOMA-HR calculation. If you live in Florida, we can see you in my practice in Pro San Luis as well. But these and other tests can catch insulin resistance years before 
the standard glucose test becomes abnormal. And if you found this video helpful, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more functional medicine approaches to common health challenges. Drop a comment below with any questions or to share which of these strategies you are planning to implement first. And remember, your body has an incredible capacity to heal when given the right environment. Insulin resistance doesn't have to be your destiny. You have the power to reverse it and reclaim your health. So for now, take care, and I will see you in the next video.